Today I'm going to show you guys how to make some amazing delicious pulled pork and you can also turn it into a meal prep if you want. Here we go. Welcome back to Self Built. Today is a cooking video. We're going to try a new series for you guys. Do some meal prep ideas. If you're trying to reach a certain goal, maintain, build, lose anything, it all boils down to what you put in your body. Working out is one thing, well, that's about an hour or two out of the day. Eating is 24 hours a day. So if you're looking for some inspiration and some ideas on some meal prep, look no further. All right guys, I'm gonna be showing you the secrets of the smoked pork. So first, what we need is pork butt or shoulder. The method I like to use is I like to use a pan. There's a lot of other methods. You can use butcher paper to wrap it, but this is something that you can use over and over again. And then you can make your own seasoning, but for me, I just like things that are simple and easy. I'm not sponsored by these guys, but I really like their flavors. These are both Fire and Smoke Society. Perfect Pork is my more favorite, but Sweet Preacher is my second favorite. I'll just show you what they look like if you guys want to try it. If not, I don't care. It's not my company, but it is good. And I'll leave a link in the description if you're curious about it because you can do your own cool homemade version where it's got all these different spices and stuff and those are delicious. Doing this version just makes it simple and delicious too. A couple reasons that I love doing smoked pork is one, it tastes freaking good. Two, it's super cheap. I got this from Costco, it was $2.29 a pound. Usually it's like $2.49 a pound, but with how prices are right now, Meat's like usually like $3.50 to $4 a pound, so this just blows everything out of the water. Budget friendly, through the roof. And it's actually not too fatty, which might sound kind of funny. As far as, if you were to compare this with a ground meat, it's about 83% lean ground beef. Now that's not to say you can also take off the fat. After we cook this thing, you're gonna see juices all over the place. So it gets leaner over time, and you can determine how much fat you want in here as much as how much flavor you want. Also need some tin foil, and then to handle the raw meat once it's on the grill, some of these little things. Blah, 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 blah. So let's open this thing up. First step, make sure you wash your hands. Next, we wanna open this porky boy up. And I just like to do it in here because there's gonna be juices going all over the place. Typically how they do it is there's two butts in here. Try to keep the juices in the bag. All right, next what we wanna do is we wanna dry off this pork because it's gonna have juices, could have blood, just whatever. What we wanna, the reason we wanna do that is so that when we add the seasoning that it'll stick to it. So you just wanna pat it down all over the place. I'll flip it over, pat that down. Just try to get all the liquid out. I patted down the pork butt. We got two butts in here as you can see. Next, you just want to very liberally add your seasoning of choice. And I'm just gonna put it all over, and I'm also gonna pat it, just to make sure that it's sticking on. Some people will use mustard as a binder to help it hang on a little bit more. I'll try that eventually, but honestly, this is just so simple and easy, and less steps the better. So I'm happy doing it this way. Pork butts are all seasoned. Now we're gonna let this season sit on here for about 30 minutes just so it can soak in, get some extra flavor. We're gonna be smoking this on my pellet grill. Make sure that you fill the hopper all the way up because this is gonna be a longer cook. And here's the type of pellets that I use. I just get them from Costco. It's a nice blend of a bunch of different kinds. It smells amazing and it tastes great. We're gonna set this to the smoke setting, which is about 160 degrees, and I'm gonna keep that overnight. The idea is just to get maximum smoke flavor as we can, 
and then as we reach that temperature to where it'll start to stall, that's where we'll turn it up and just get it finished off. I wish you guys could smell the smoke coming through the screen because man, just the smell alone is so delicious and it makes me love pellet grills. Watch out now, we got the rubber gloves. What you wanna do when you're smoking pork putt, a pro tip is make sure the fat side is down towards the most of the heat. You'll notice that one side has way more fat than the other. That is the fat side. That'll help it keep moist and protect it from drying out. And then the other side is gonna turn into a beautiful bark and have awesome flavor. I'm starting this in the evening and I'm gonna let it run through the night while I'm asleep. These can take about eight hours to almost as long as you want, 12, 14, 16 hours. So I like to have the majority of it knocked out while I'm home, but just not conscious. So that way it doesn't feel like it's so much of a long cook, because this can definitely take your whole day if you start this first thing in the morning. And then I've got a little sensor that I'm just gonna plug in. It's not the most accurate, but it gets me in the ballpark of the temperature. So that way I don't have to manually use a different thermometer to know where the meat level's at. If you're cooking during colder temperatures, I would highly recommend getting a thermal blanket for your pellet grill. It helps insulate it, keep the heat in, and the temperature will not fluctuate as harshly, and it'll help preserve your pellets from getting e eaten up as quick. Good morning, everyone. It's been about 10, 11 hours on the smoker so far, and we've got our temperature right here. This is right where the meat starts to stall. So we're gonna take these butts out. Ooh. <laughs> Look at those, delicious. I'm gonna grab them, put them in here, and then we're gonna wrap them up. Ooh, would you look at that? Once you reach the temperature of about 150, 160, that's when you want to wrap the meat in either aluminum foil like I'm doing, or you can do butcher paper where you don't use the pan. I just like this method because it's reusable. I'm gonna stick the butts back in the pellet grill and I'm gonna turn up the temperature to about 275. That way it'll help this thing cook much, much quicker. Put in the sensor to know where we're at as far as the ballpark. And it'll take a couple more hours, but we are almost there. The ideal temperature that you want to get this to is 195 to 205. It is a very high connective tissue meat and that temperature is what breaks it down and helps it get soft and tender. It's been about two hours since this has been wrapped and I've been keeping an eye on the temperature but I just want to show you guys where we're at. And this is the most important part, just because you don't want to over or undercook it. You want to get right in that sweet spot. And so I'm just shooting for anything over 195. So, and it's slowing down right there. So we are good on that butt. Like to check both of them because they're different thicknesses. All right, these are both done. So I'll pull this off and get it inside. It was a total of about 12, 13 hours of cooking. And here's how many pellets we used. Looked like it was about half a hopper. Now we need this meat to rest. What that does is it lets all the juices get soaked back in and it makes this just more juicy and delicious. But I wanna take this cover off just to show you what this looks like now. And then I'll cover it back up. Oh my gosh. If you could smell this through the screen, oh, delicious. Look at that. <laughs> We're gonna let the meat rest. Ideally, you want it to rest between 30 minutes to five hours, which is a huge window, but I like to shoot for the middle of the road between one two hours or so. So I'm gonna go get a workout in. Then we're gonna be back and we're gonna shred this thing up and make some meals. We are back. It's been sitting for about three, three and a half hours or so. And it still is very warm. If you're curious, after all that sitting, we're still sitting at 123 degrees. So 
If you have the time, don't be afraid to let it sit and cool down because this is going to make it super easy and comfortable for your hands to shred it up. You can use gloves, there's different devices, but I just like to do it by hand. You can see all of this juice and fat that has seeped out. So if you want to make it super lean, you can drain it right now and then shred it up. But I'm not afraid of fat. Fat is flavor and it's still going to be lean compared to normal ground meats. I'm going to shred this up and then I'm going to get it all juicified. And then I'm going to do a little bit more seasoning just to make it even more delicious. Before we shred this thing, just take a look at this bark. This is so good. And you can see it's just literally falling <laughs> right apart. This thing is ready to be shredded. There's some fat on the bottom that we're gonna get rid of. I'm pretty meticulous when it comes to this part. I've got a separate container that I'm gonna put. Most of the fat, I don't like to have the mush. Most of the fat in this thing has melted and just liquefied in here. But there are some pieces that are really mushy and personally, I don't like that texture, so I'm just gonna get rid of it. But as you can see, This thing just falls apart. Delicious. So good. And this pink that you can see here, that's from the smoking part. So you can see how deep it's penetrated. So with doing it that long, it did a pretty good job. All right, we got it all shredded up and all the connective tissue and fat and just gooey stuff that I don't want to eat, I put in here. You do not have to do that. But for me, that's just my preference and how I like it. Next, what I'm going to do is I'm going to I'm gonna spread this around in all of this juice, and then I'm gonna put some more seasoning on it, roll it around one more time, add more seasoning, and then bag it up, and it'll be ready to go. There's really nothing to it. I just like to get all the surfaces wet, so that way it'll hang on to the seasoning. Then we'll bag it and I'll see how much we got out of this. This is what we're left with. It's just under 10 pounds of cooked pork butt. Delicious. I'm going to be separating this and putting it into some meals after it's cooled down a little bit. So that way it'll hang on to the juices and fat and flavor a little bit more. Still got a lot of juice left or fat. So if you're worried about that, even if you do it this way and spin it all around in it, it's still significantly leaner. And then this is just the connective tissue and fat that didn't liquefy. Back again, got this all refrigerated so it's cooled down so that way I'm not going to be having juice go all over the place. You don't have to do that but this is just the method I'm going to show you of doing it. I'm going to show you a meal prep that I'm doing. Now you're probably going to have to tailor this to your needs but I'm just going to show you mine. I'm going to do 7 ounces of pork. And then I'm going to do two thirds cup. This is kind of cheating, but macaroni salad because it's so freaking good because it makes us feel like a Hawaiian food, but it's a little bit more lean. Macaroni salad store bought is not the best. You can make your own to make it way better, but I don't have time for it today. And then I'm going to do a handful of mixed veggies. I won't bore you with all the process of it, so I'll put it in and then I'll show you what it looks like. We are done. So here it is, got it separated into three sections. We got the pork, pasta salad, and then a handful of veggies. This is just half of the pork that we just cooked. So for my other half, I've got it in the freezer right now. It'll stay good for a couple weeks and I'll do something different with that. But if you have not tried something like this, it is so good. And if it doesn't fit with what you're currently eating, you can change up the pasta salad to something else because I mean that is where a lot of the fat and bad calories come from in this meal but but for me it's fine it's within my plan that I'm going for if you need to tailor it to your own needs and cut it down in calories a little bit the pasta salad is where it's pretty dense so you can make your own pasta salad or substitute it for whatever you want but for what I'm doing right now it works perfect and it tastes so good I can't wait for you guys to try it definitely let me know what you think and if you have any questions, let me know as far as the process or anything like that. I hope this video helps you out. I'm going to do a couple different meal prep ideas. And if it catches on, I'll definitely do more and more. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Share it with everyone you know. And we'll see you next time on Mosel Boot.